den Savon. Welcome to ENE Learning Hub. Where I'm going to go through and explain the solutions or questions related to transistors and silicon control rectifier. All right. So before I begin, I'm going to ask those of you who haven't subscribed to the channel as yet to do so, like the videos and share the videos with others, especially those who are doing CSEC electrical. All right. So let's go. So this is question one from the 2008 past paper. Part right, A, it says, name three types of transistor configurations. The three types of transistor configurations are one, common base transistor configuration, two, common collector transistor configuration, three, common emitter transistor configuration. All right, so those are the three types of transistor configurations, and that's it for part A. For part B, it says, what type of transistor configuration will you select to design a high input impedance and a low output impedance? So the type of configuration that will be selected is the common collector configuration. All right, so this configuration will give you a high input impedance and a low output impedance. All right, so that's it for part B. For part C, it says in a transistor amplifier circuit for a base current of 50 microamp, the collector current is three milliamp. Calculate the current gain of the amplifier circuit. So current gain is equal to collector current divided by the base current. That will equal to three milliamp divided by 50 microamp, and that will give you 60. So that's the current gain. All right, so that's it for part C, and that's it for this question. Let's move on to the next question. All right, so this is question four from the 2007 past paper. It says, figure two shows schematic symbols of two semiconductor devices, A and B. Part A, it says, name each device. Semiconductor device A, that is an NPN transistor. For semiconductor device B, that is a silicon control rectifier. In short, SCR. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says, identify two terminals on each device. For a semiconductor device A, the NPN transistor, terminal one is the base. Terminal two is the collector. For our semiconductor device B, the silicon control rectifier, terminal five is the gate and terminal four is the cathode. All right, so that's it for part B. For part C, it says, give one application of each device. For the transistor, it is used in amplifier circuits to amplify electrical signals. For the silicon control rectifier, it is used in lighting circuits to adjust the brightness of lamps, and it is done by controlling the power delivered to the lamps. All right, so that's it for part C, and that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So this is question six from the 2012 past paper. Part A, it says figure three shows two transistors connected in an electronic circuit. They are labeled A and B. So here are the two transistors, A and B. It says give the name of each transistor connection using the labels A and B. All right, so for figure A, this is a common emitter transistor configuration, All right? So we know this because the emitter terminal of the transistor is linked 
to both the input and the output. For figure B, this is a common collector transistor configuration. And we know this because the collector is linked to both the input and output. All right, so that's it for part A. For part B, it says figure four shows the family of curves for a transistor. So this is figure four. It says in your answer booklet, write the numbers one, two, three, and four. Next to each number, name the characteristic represented in the diagram. All right, so at one, this is the DC load line. Two represents the collector current. Three represents the voltage between the collector and the emitter. And four, these lines represent the base current. All right, so that's it for part B. Part C, it says figure five shows an NPN transistor amplifier. So this is figure five, the NPN transistor amplifier. It says, assuming the transistor to be silicon and IE equal IC, calculate part one, the current through the potential divider. So what they ask us to calculate is the current flowing through resistor R1 and R2. So that's the current flowing through the potential divider or what we call the voltage divider circuit. All right, so I is equal to VCC divided by R1 plus R2. That will give us 10 volt divided by 22 kilo ohm plus 3.9 kilo ohm. That will give us 10 volt divided by 25.9 kilo ohm. That will give us a current of 386 microamp. So that's the current flowing through the potential divider. All right, so that's it for part one. For part two, it says to calculate the base voltage. So the base voltage is established across the resistor R2. So it will be from this point to this point. So therefore, VB is equal to VCC multiply in bracket R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That will give us 10 volt multiply in bracket 3.9 kilo ohm divided by 22 kilo ohm plus 3.9 kilo ohm. That will give us 10 volt multiplied by 3.9 kilo ohm divided by 25.9 kilo ohm. That will give us 10 volt multiplied by 0 0.15 equal to 1.5 volt. So this voltage here is the base voltage. So that's it for part two. For part three, it says to calculate the emitter voltage. Seeing that we have VB, we can calculate VE. Where these questions are concerned, if the voltage for the transistor material is not given, which is VBE, always assume that it is 0 0.7. So VE is equal to VB, which we just calculated that volume, minus VBE. So VBE would be between this point and this point. So that's the voltage for the material of the transistor. So we're working with 0 0.7. So that is 1.5 volt minus 0 0.7 volt. And that will give us a voltage of 0 0.8 volt. All right, so that's it for part three. For part four, it says to calculate the emitter current. So the 
emitter current would be the current flowing through this resistor here, R4. R4 is also called RE. All right. So to calculate the emitter current, IE is equal to VE divided by R4. That is 0 0.8 volt divided by 820 ohm. That will give us 0 0.97 milliamp. For the emitter current, it is always in milliampere. And keep in mind that the question also tells us that IE is equal to IC. So what that means is that once you have IE, you also have IC because they are equal. So it means that this current is also the same current for IC. All right, so that's it for part four. For part five, it says to calculate the collector voltage. So VC, which is a collector voltage, is equal to VCC minus IC times R3. All right. So the voltage that we want to find is the voltage between this point here and this point. So VCC is equal to 10 volt minus IC, which is 0 0.97 milliamp. As I said before, the current for IE is the same as IC multiplied by 3.3 kilo ohm. That will give us 10 volt minus 3.2 volt. That will give us 6.8 volt. So VC will give us 6.8 volt. All right, so that's it for part five. And that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So this is question five from the 2014 past paper. Part one of A, it says name one impurity which is added to a pure semiconductor material to form a P-type semiconductor material. So that impurity is boron. So that's it for part one of A. For part two of A, it says name one impurity which is added to a pure semiconductor material to form an n-type semiconductor material. That impurity is arsenic. So let's say for part two of A. Part three of A, it says, it says name the two best conditions of a semiconductor diode when it is connected in a half-wave rectifier circuit. So the two best conditions are forward bias and reverse bias. So that's it for part three of A. For part B, it says, figure three shows the schematic drawing of an NPN transistor amplifier. So this is figure three, the schematic drawing for the NPN transistor amplifier. It says, briefly explain the function of resistors R1 and R2 in the operation of the amplifier circuit. So the function of R1 and R2 is that they form the voltage divider circuit of the amplifier, which is used to give a fraction of the input voltage that is used for the biasing voltage to operate the transistor, right? So this is R1 and R2 resistor. So this is the voltage divider circuit here. And it is used to give a fraction of the 10 volt that is here. And the fraction of that 10 volt is the biasing voltage. And that is used to operate the transistor here. All right, so that's it for part B. And that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So this is question eight from the 2015 pass paper. Part A, it says that uh, figure 11 shows uh, the schematic symbols for two bipolar junction transistors. 
So here is figure 11 showing two bipolar transistors. It says, in your answer booklet, write the numbers one and two. Next to each number, write the type of transistor identified by that number in figure 11. All right, so number one, that is the NPN transistor. And we can easily identify that by using the arrow. So the direction the arrow points that can tell you the type of transistor. So for number one, we can see that the arrow is pointing outward. So it means that this transistor is the NPN. For two, that is the PNP transistor. And we know that because the arrow is pointing inward. All right, so that's how we can identify two types of transistors. So that's it for part A. Part B, it says figure 12 shows the schematic drawings of three ways to connect a transistor to make an amplifier. All right, so here is figure 12. And figure 12 is showing the three ways a transistor can be connected to make an amplifier. So let's continue. It says in your answer booklet, write the numbers one, two, and three. Next to each number, write the type of transistor circuit connection identified by that number in figure 12. All right, so number one, this is the common emitter transistor configuration. And we know this because the emitter is common to both the input and output. Number two, this is the common collector transistor configuration. And we know this because the collector is common to both the input and output. Number three, this is the common base transistor configuration. And we know this because the base is common to both the input and the output. All right, so that's it for part B of this question. And that's it for this question. Let's move on to the next question. So this is question six from the 2009 past paper. Part A, it says with the help of diagrams, show how and state how you will connect a PN junction semiconductor diode to a DC supply. So part one, reverse bias the diode. Part two, to forward bias the diode. So let's start with part one, to reverse bias the diode. All right, so here's the diagram. Now, looking at the diagram, you can see that the negative terminal of the source is connected to the key type material, and the positive terminal of the source is connected to the end type material. So this is how the source is connected to the PN junction of the diode for the diode to operate in reverse bias. Part two, looking at the diagram, we can see that the positive terminal of the source is connected to the P-type material and the negative terminal of the source is connected to the N-type material. So this is how the terminals of the source must be connected to the PN junction of the diode for it to be in forward bias. All right, so that's it for part two. So let's move on to part B. It says figure three shows the schematic of a transistor amplifier. It says for RL equal 4.7 kilo ohm, VBE equal 0 0.6 volt, VCE equal 5.5 .5 volt, and IC equal IE. And it says calculate part one, voltage VBG. So voltage VBG is between this point here, point B and point G. All right, so to calculate the voltage VBG, we'll have to first calculate the base voltage. 
So base voltage is equal to VCC multiply in bracket R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That will give us 12 volt multiply in bracket 6 kilo ohm divided by 24 kilo ohm plus 6 kilo ohm. That will give us 12 volt multiply in bracket 6 kilo ohm divided by 30 kilo ohm. And that will give us 12 volt multiplied by 0 0.2. And that will give us 2.4 volt. So that's the base voltage. Now that we have the base voltage, we can now go ahead and calculate VBG. VBG is equal to VB plus VBE. Remember, VBE is the voltage of the transistor material. For this question, VBE was given, which is 0 0.6 volt. So VBG is equal to 2.4 volt plus 0 0.6 volt. That will give us 3 volt. So what that means is that between point B and point G, we will end up with 3 volts. All right, so that's it for part one. For part two, it says to calculate the voltage drop across the resistor RE. All right, so this is the resistor RE, and we need to calculate the voltage drop. All right, so seeing that we already have VB, and we know the volume for VBE, which was given 0 0.6 volt, we can go ahead and calculate the voltage drop across RE. So VE, which represents the voltage drop across RE is equal to VB minus VBE. That is 2.4 volt minus 0 0.6 volt. That will give us 1.8 volt. All right, so that's it for part two. For part three, it says to calculate the value of the current IC. All right, so the first thing that we need to find is the voltage drop across the resistor RC, which is this resistor right here. So in this case, it is called RL. All right, so we need to find the voltage drop across this resistor. So VC is equal to VCC minus, in bracket, VCE plus VE. So VCE was given and we calculated VE and also VCC was given. So therefore VC is equal to 12 volt minus, in bracket, 5.5 volt plus 1.8 volt. That will give us 4.7 volt. Now that we have the voltage, we can go ahead and calculate IC. IC is equal to VC divided by RL, that is 4.7 volt divided by 4.7 kilo ohm, and that will give us one milliamp. All right, so that's it for part three. For part four, it says to calculate the value of RE. All right, so remember the statement that was given here, IC is equal to IE. So since IC is equal to IE, RE is equal to VE divided by IE, that will give us 1.8 volt divided by one milliamp, that will give us 1.8 kilo ohm. All right, so that's it for part four. So let's move on to part C. It says, explain briefly the functions of the capacitors C1, C2, and C3. Capacitors C1 and C2 are used as coupling capacitors to separate the AC signal from the DC biasing voltage. For C3, it allows the AC signal to bypass RE. For part D, 
it says state the application of the circuit shown in figure three in a radio receiver circuit. So this circuit is used to amplify signals that the receiver receives. All right, so that's it for part D. And that's it for this question. All right, let's move on to the next question. So this is question five from the 2013 past paper question. It says figure four shows bias voltages for an NPN transistor. Part A, it says identify from figure four. Part one, the type of base emitter junction bias. So that is a forward bias. Part two, the type of collector base junction bias. That is reverse bias. And that's it for part A. Part B, it says state the approximate amount of emitter current. All right, so, all right, so without any values given, we don't know the exact values per se. So I'm going to use percentage. So for part one of B, it says to state the approximate amount of emitter current that flows through the base terminal. So that would be at least 1% of the emitter current. For part two, it says state the approximate amount of emitter current that flows through the collector terminal, and that would be approximately 99% of the emitter current. All right, so that's it for part B. For part C, it says figure five shows the DC biasing connection for a PNP transistor. It says calculate part one, the standing current IS. So IS, which is a current that is flowing through resistor R1 and resistor R2. So IS is equal to VCC divided by R1 plus R2. That will give us 12 volt divided by 15 kilo ohm plus one kilo ohm. That will give us 0 0.00075 ampere. So that's it for part one. For part two, it says to calculate the base voltage, VB. So VB is equal to VCC multiplied by, in bracket, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That will give us 12 volt multiply in bracket, one kilo ohm divided by one kilo ohm plus 15 kilo ohm. That will give us 12 volt multiply by in bracket, one kilo ohm divided by 16 kilo ohm. That will give us 12 volt multiply by 0 0.063 and that will give us 0 0.75 volt. So that's the base voltage. All right, so that's it for this question. Let's move on to the next question. So this is question seven from the 2007 pass paper. Part A, it says figure four shows a common emitter amplifier. So this is figure four, the common emitter amplifier. So we were given the following, VBE is equal to 0 0.6 volt, VCC is equal to 12 volt, R1 is equal to 100 kilo ohm, R2 equal to 20 kilo ohm, RL is equal to 1 kilo ohm, RE is equal to 1.4 kilo ohm, and beta is equal to 50, and IE is equal to IC. Part one of A, it says to calculate the voltage across R2. So the voltage across R2 is also the base voltage vb all right so vr2 is equal to vb equal vcc multiply in bracket r2 divided by r1 plus r2 that will give us 12 volt multiply in bracket 12 kilo ohm divided by 100 kilo ohm plus 20 kilo ohm that will give us 12 volt multiply by 0 0.17 and that will give us 2.04 volt. So this is the voltage across R2, and this is also the base voltage. 
So that's the for part one. For part two, it says to calculate the voltage across RE. All right, so voltage across RE, VE is equal to VB, which we just calculated, minus VBE, which was given. That would give us 2.04 minus 0 0.6. That would give us 1.44 volt. All right, so that's it for part two. For part three, it says to calculate VCE. All right, so VCE would be the voltage between this point and this point. All right, so to calculate VCE, the first thing that we're going to do is to calculate IE. So IE is equal to VE divided by RE. That is 1.44 volt divided by 1.4 kilo ohm. That will give us one milliamp. So IC is equal to IE. So it means that IC is also one milliamp. So now we can go ahead and calculate VCE. So VCE is equal to VCC minus IC multiply in bracket RC plus RE. That will give us 12 volt minus one milliamp multiply in bracket one kilo ohm plus 1.4 kilo ohm. That will give us 12 volt minus 2.4 volt. That will give us 9.6 volt. So that's it for part three. So let's move on to part B. It says, name two methods of connecting a transistor in a circuit to form an amplifier. So the two methods are one, common emitter configuration, two, common collector configuration. All right, so that's it for part B. For part C, it says explain the function of C3. So this is C3 here. And C3 allows the AC signal to bypass RE. All right, so that's it for part C. For part D, it says between which two terminals of the circuit would you apply an input signal? All right, so the two terminals are I and N. All right, so these are the two terminals you would apply a input signal. So that's it for part D, and that's it for this question. All right, so let's move on to the next question. So this is question four from the 2014 past paper question. All right, one of A, it says, state the names of the control and the positive terminals of a silicon control rectifier. All right, so for the control terminal, of the SCR, that is the gate, for the positive terminal of the SCR, that is the cathode. All right, so that's it for part one of A. For part two, it says, state two advantages of silicon controlled rectifiers when used in switching circuits. The two advantages are, one, the SCR have a high switching speed. Two, the SCR can handle high current which makes it suitable for high powered circuits. So that's it for part two of A. For part B, it says figure two shows the schematic drawing of a silicon controlled rectifying main switching circuit. All right, so this is part two, the schematic drawing of a silicon controlled rectifier. All right, it says briefly explain the operation of the rectifier in the AC circuit. So in an AC circuit, the SCR can be used to control the flow of current to a load. All right, so there are two modes. So you have forward blocking mode and you have forward conducting mode. In the forward blocking mode, the anode of the SCR is made positive with respect to the cathode, but no gate signal is applied. In this mode, the SCR behaves like an open switch. In forward conducting mode, a gate signal is applied to trigger the SCR into conduction. When the gate signal is applied, a small current flows into the gate terminal, which triggers 
a process known as latch-up. This causes the SCR to switch to a low resistance state known as the on state. So that's it for part B and that's it for this question.